This video is especially for grade 12 CAT students who are practicing for their paper one or prac exam. And we are looking at the supplementary or the June 2023 paper, not the November one. And we are looking at question three, which is the Excel question. So let's go see if we can do our spreadsheets question well. So yeah, we've got the spreadsheet question. And the key thing when you open up the spreadsheet, it says open up the three marathon spreadsheet, which I've done already. But remember when you're answering questions, make sure that you are working in the right worksheet. So that's always key. So the first question is 3.1, delete sheet three from the workbook. So we come over here, we are in sheet three already. So I'm gonna right click on that sheet and we are going to delete it. So that way we make sure that we delete the right one. Now let's go to 3.2, which says work in the participants worksheet, which we are in at the moment and set the print area to cells A12 to E62. So that's got to do with the page layout. Now we can come here to print area and we can set the print area by first selecting it. That's one way we can do it. So we want A12 to E62. So we're gonna come here to A12, which is there to E62. So we're gonna come to E and go all the way down to 62. So just that part of the table and we can then come here and say print area set. And if you want to double check that we can come here to the page setup dialog pop up. And if we come here to sheet, you'll see that the print area has been set to A12 to E62. You could have also done it through here by setting what area must be the print area. So there we go. So that is correct. Now add the text marathon logo as alternative text to the image in cell A3. So there's the cell A3. Whenever in doubt, I just right click on the image and we can say yeah, view alternative text. And they said that the alternative text must be marathon logo. So we're going to type here marathon logo. So you could have also come here to picture format and clicked on the alternative text there to view that part as well if you wanted to. Then 3.4, insert a function in F5. So let's find F5. There's F5 over there. It's a whole bunch of blocks. And we want to determine the average qualifying time, which is only for one mark. So it should be quite simple and easy, the average qualifying time. So if I come over here, there are the qualifying times. So we want to find the average one. So I'm going to say equals average, open bracket, and we want to select all the qualifying times, which will be from R13 up until I think R62. And then we will close our brackets and press enter. And that is the average qualifying time. 3.5, the distance of the race is stored in F3. There's the distance of the race. For every complete five kilometers from the starting point of the race, the medical station will be placed on the route. The start and the finish points will also have a medical station. Insert a formula to calculate how many stations will be placed on the route. Let's think about this. So we know how the distance of the race is. So we know that every five kilometers, there'll be a medical station. So basically we're gonna take that distance and divide it by five to find out how many medical stations we're going to need. But they also say the start and finish points will also have medical stations. So besides the every five, we're gonna have one at the front and one at the beginning. So there's always two extra. So I think that's quite easy. If we wanna do that, I think we have to put the formula there in F8. So there's F8. So we're gonna put in a formula and we're gonna take this distance, take the cell that contains the distance, and we're going to divide it by five to find out how many medical stations that we need. Let's just see what that does. So it does 11.2. Now we can't have 0.2 of a medical station and we don't want to go up to 12. So what I'm gonna do is, we don't wanna round because if it goes slightly too high, it's gonna round up. So I'm actually gonna, you can either round it down so we can use the round down function or you could use the trunk function. So we're gonna round down to zero decimal places. So it'll take it down to 11. So there are 11 stations for every five kilometers of that 56 kilometers. But we also want to add one at the front and one at the end. So we're going to just add two to that number and that'll make it 13. So I think that'll be correct. Remember, you can't have 0.2 of a station and we don't want to round it up because then it's just too many stations. So we'll round it down because we didn't have a full five kilometers. That 0.2 represents just that last little bit and we don't need a medical station for that last little bit. So that's why I rounded it down. 3.6, each of the 50 athletes will receive a special entry number. Generate an entry number in B20. So let's come to B20, B20 over here. Let's, there's the block over there. And we want it to be a number between one and 50, followed by the first two letters of the athlete's name, followed by the registration number of the athlete. So let's first get the, the random number between one and 50. So we're gonna say equals 
rand between because that's going to be my random number and then we're going to say comma and our bottom number must be a one and my top number must be a 50. so that's going to give me my random number now that'll be different each time i press enter it's going to change it so it'll be a random number between one and 50. then added to it now we are constructing a string which means we can't just go plus we need to add to the string which means we can use the ampersand that at that and symbol that you guys use for your text messages. That's the symbol to combine pieces of values next to each other to build a string or build some text. So we're going to add on to that number. We're going to add on the first two letters of the athlete's name, which is over here. Here's where the athlete's name is. So we want the first two letters. So we're going to copy from the Beyonce side, from the left side to the left, to the left. So we're going to copy from the left of the name and we're only going to copy two characters. So you can see that it'll be a random number with a K and a U for this person's name. And then the last bit is the registration number of the athlete. So the registration number of the athlete is that number over there, I think it is. So we're going to click over here. We're going to add on to that. We're going to add on the registration number, which would be that number over there. So we take a random number between 1 and 50, add on to it the first two letters of the name, add on to it the registration number. So there we go. That's the random entry number. Now you do have these building blocks over here. So you could have broken it down into bits like this. So a random number between 1 and 50 is like that. And we could have set equals left of the name for 2. And then you could have just come over here and set it equals to this block and this block and that block that would have done the exact same thing but just take note normally i tell students if you want to test that it's correct if you drag it down it'll apply that same formula to all the other numbers and you can check if those numbers change then you made a mistake if they don't change then you did them correctly but you can't do that in this case because we are dealing with a random number so i don't know if it's always going to generate 42 and 21 for those people so i'm not going to do that for this but let's just believe that that is correct so that is another way of doing that question now 3.7 and the last question for this spreadsheet question during the race athletes will wear wristbands in different colors according to their age group insert a v lookup so they tell me which lookup to use in j17 so let's go to j17 there it is we're going to insert a v lookup to display the color of the wristband that lucky will wear i'm assuming this person yes this is the person's name is lucky use the data in the band worksheet copy the function down to the rest of the cells in j4 we're going to use what so if we come here to the band how do we know so the age determines the band so if i come over here we're going to look at the age of the person so 64 for lucky technically means they must be wearing a purple band so let's see if we get the right answer so we're going to say equals a v lookup open bracket the first thing is what are we looking for we are looking for the age of lucky we're just doing this person so we're just looking at that cell f 17 is what we're looking for we're looking at the age then i'm going to put a comma now because i'm going to move to a new sheet i'm going to have to do everything else from that sheet and not come back here. otherwise it's going to start messing up which values i'm referring to so we are now looking for our table array which is in the band sheet so i click over here and i select the text not including the heading so i'm selecting that text so we go in band exclamation mark a2 to b6 now because we are copying this formula down we don't want this to copy down to a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 as we copy that formula down we want it always to refer to a2 to b6 so while i'm on this i'm going to press f4 and that will put the dollar signs around it which will be the absolute cell referencing whenever you're going to copy down a vlookup your table that you're referring to must be in absolute cell referencing and then i put a comma now i'm not going to go back to the participants we're going to stay here because we've got everything we need is over here now we need to know which column are we getting the information from so this is column one of our table this is column two we looked at the age and then we want to get the value from this column, which is column two. So we put the number two there and then the exact match they want us do we want an appropriate match or an exact match we don't want to be exactly 20 because it could be like 64 there's no 64 there it must be appropriate to that so we actually don't even need to put in true we could have just left it out but if you had to leave in that value you would have to say it's true but we're going to leave it out and it will by default make it true so let's press enter and as you can see that person is purple so if i copy this down it should work correctly because we used absolute cell referencing on the table so if i come over here you see lucky is 
purple but 24 if you look here 24 would be a yellow band and then we've got a yellow band so there we go it's working i just want to show you what it would look like if we did not have the absolute cell reference in so i remove the absolute cell reference in so it still gives me the right answer for that person but if i drag it down you see now we start getting funny answers so that's why it's important to put the absolute cell reference in around the table every time you are doing a vlookup that you're going to copy down Okay, so there we go. That's the last bit of that question. I think we're done. We can now save and move on to our next question. For more exam papers, make sure that you go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button and look at the playlist as well as keep up to date whenever we post new videos. Also follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.